we will now develop our first model of economic behavior. So just to remind ourselves of what a model is, a model is a formalization of a theory that facilitates scientific inquiry. So it's a formalization of a theory. What's a theory? A theory is a logical view of the way things work. It's a hypothesis. It is frequently formulated on the basis of observation. So we may observe individuals behaving in a particular way in the economy, and we may formulate a theory of how they behave. And a model is a formalization of that theory. So we transform the theories into models, and then we test the theories by confronting them with data and statistical analysis. So let's get to a numerical example which develops a model of the economy. Here we have a table. So we have two individuals in this economy, Amanda and Zoe. And each one of them works a 36-hour week. So each one has 36 hours to devote to the tasks facing them. The numbers in the chart refer to the hours devoted to each activity and the amount of production each can generate as a result of using their hours in the corresponding activity. So the number three here indicates that Amanda requires three hours to procure or to catch fish, to harvest vegetables, Amanda, on the other hand, requires two hours. Zoe has different production efficiencies. She appears to be somewhat more efficient in catching fish because she only requires two hours to catch fish. However, she appears to be less efficient than Amanda in harvesting vegetables because she requires four hours to harvest a basket of vegetables. So given these hours requirements, and given that each one of these producers has a certain amount of hours available each week, how much fish could each produce and how much vegetable could each produce? Clearly, Amanda, since she requires three hours to catch each basket of fish, would be able to produce 12 baskets of fish in the course of a week. For the same reasoning, she would be able to produce 18 baskets of vegetables. Zoe, by the same calculations, would be able to produce 18 catches of fish and 9 baskets of vegetables. Now, one way for each of these individuals to survive would be to divide, <coughs> excuse me, would be to divide their time between fishing and vegetable harvesting. An alternative to that process would be for Amanda to specialize in one of the activities and for Zoe to specialize in the other activity. So what we're going to do now is to examine whether or not there is a gain to be had for these two individuals if they go the specialization route. So before doing that, let's just summarize what we observe here. By allocating the total time to a single activity, Amanda can produce 12 units of fish or 18 units of vegetable. Zoe, on the other hand, can produce 18 units of fish or 9 units of vegetable. So by comparing the amount of fish and the amount of vegetable each can produce in the space of a week, we see that Amanda is less efficient at fish than Zoe, but she is more efficient at harvesting vegetables than Zoe. So if we were to recognize this, and if we were to get one individual to specialize in fish and one individual to specialize in vegetables, we would get Zoe to produce fish, and we would get Amanda to produce vegetables. So Amanda has an advantage over Zoe in producing vegetables, 
Zoe has an advantage over Amanda in producing fish. The next thing we need to do here before we formalize our model is to define what we mean by the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of a choice is what me must be sacrificed when the choice is made. The cost of making a choice is what you cannot do as a result of that. So what is Zoe's opportunity cost of vegetables for fish and vice versa? Well, we see that Zoe is capable of producing twice as many units of fish as she is vegetables. Let's go back to the numerical example. Zoe can produce 18 units of fish or 9 units of vegetable.